Hi guys, so in today's video I want to touch on something I've been talking about. I've kind of mentioned it in comments, in the comments section and stuff, and I think I've talked about it on certain videos, but I haven't made a video about it. So it made me wonder, like, if the people understand what I'm talking about when I talk about it. And it's a little hack that, like, you can gauge your nutrient levels in a low-tech or ecosystem type natural aquarium. And I thought it'd be handy for people to understand. Um, Obviously, yeah, I, I didn't invent it, but it's something that I've, a lot of the information I shared is tried and tested methods that I've come across over the years, like my four key concepts I talk about, that they're stuff that I've come across over the years, and I bear them in mind. It just helps me uh, bear things in mind when I'm dealing with situations. And so obviously I talk a lot about floating plants, don't I, in the aerial advantage, and there's, there's more to it than just and absorb an excess of nutrients out of your aquarium. If you look there, remember I uh, pop some... Where is he? Where's he going? So check this out. Remember I was talking about, I pop some... Uh... Here we go. Remember I popped some Amazon frog bit in the tank because it wasn't doing well on the other one? Well, it was like one leaf when I put in here, and now it's, now it's quite a few. And there's another bit just over in the corner there. I'll see if I can get a clear shot. There you go. So we've got salvinia, we've got duckweed. Now, duckweed can be a bit of a pain. But let's talk about it. Right, so not only does this absorb excessive nutrients out the water column, it also acts as an index that we can use if you're running a low-tech planted tank or like a wall stab method tank or anything like that. You can gauge stuff. Now remember that a lot of people talk about algae and stuff in the water. Now on a basic terms, in a basic sense, algae is excessive light and excess ammonia in the water. There's excessive light and ammonia in the water and the plants aren't absorbing the ammonium. It's gonna create algae, not so we need to balance it. So how do we balance it? Using the dreaded duckweed and other floating plants. So I'm just doing my weekly water changes. I missed them last week because we had a really cold spell and I wasn't into it, but let's get into the meat of today's video. So if we've got plants in the water column and we've got floating plants. Now, we know the plants are getting enough CO2 from the atmosphere on the surface and we know they're getting enough, enough light. So therefore, we understand that if the floating plants are struggling, it's, pro it's, it's likely a nutrient deficiency unless something strange is going on in aquariums, then we know it's a nutrient deficiency. So then, if the floating plants are doing well and the plants in our aquarium aren't doing well, then it's either a, a lighting issue, but if they, it's either a lighting issue or there's insufficient nutrients in the water column for the plants. So by that simple logic, it's a load of deduction and we can tell what we're missing in our aquariums. We can tell whether it's CO2 or nutrients. And then we can compare the nutrient deficiencies to plant graphs so we can tell what type of nutrients were deficient in our aquarium and then we can get them nutrients into the system and everything's all good, the plants are flying and it's more accurate than commercial test kits. So it's just a quick simple hack um, and there was something else I wanted to touch on while, while I'm here, while I'm doing my water changes and gives me an opportunity to talk to you all. Stay right there please. So I've seen some people playing around with Ludwigia repins lately and talking about Ludwigia repins, which is a cool plant. Um, so stem plants, see these nodes, and then we've got the internode, we've got the nodes. Now, what I do is, when I want to plant them, I, I float them on the surface of the water. Obviously the oxygen, CO2 exchange, but the surface is probably the best in a low-tech planted tank, but seeing that, so we've got adventitious roots growing and we've got new stems growing from the main stem, these off. And what we can do is cut these 
on plants that when it gets big enough, say that one there. We can cut there and there and plant that in the, subs in the substrate and we grow a new stem. And if this is all healthy, you could float it on the surface and that's that's what stem plants do. Rotala does it. There's, there's tons of them that propagate this way. I'm not sure that the Bacopa does it. If anyone knows what the Bacopa does it, let me know in the comments because I'm interested. The main two I know of is Rotala's. They'll literally lay down on the substrate and then throw out a load of runners and a load of shoots, roots, structural roots into the ground and they're off. So if anyone's struggling to get a Ludwigia going or they're, they're struggling to understand how to propagate Ludwigia repens and Rotala stuff like that, then there's your answer. And I was hoping to get the floor stab tank set up but because of the storm we've just had, I've been doing crazy hours in work, I've been leaving at like 4 o'clock in the morning, 5 o'clock in the morning. And sometimes I'm in getting into one or two, hence the scruffy beard and the hair, I wanted to get them cut, but I just haven't had time. And I think I've missed a few days of video, so once to get a video out, I thought, there's a few neat ideas for you to, uh, uh, gives you a bit of inspiration and go, ah, I can try it on in my tank. Um, yeah, and I've ordered, I also ordered a big order of plants that I wanted to get in this tank I don't like I won't spoil the fun and let you know because what's the point in telling you and then you already know what's coming before the video comes out so <clears throat> I was thinking about doing Dustin's data it was I keep calling her up here which is just like a low tech data tank but the spring's coming and obviously I've talked about setting ponds up outside and growing plants and I was talking to uh, one of my local fi fish aquatic shops the other day and they've said that they can't get hold of a uh, Dwarf sides, and I'm going to look more into that. And that's one of the uh, <coughs> that's one of the plants that I'm going to get into the. I don't know whether to get a polytunnel or a greenhouse or something in the summer. But as I say, I want to get all me. I've said this, haven't I? I want to get me all my shrimp outside in the summer. Like I'll split the colony down, get half outside. So then I've got two separate stocks of shrimp. I want to get red ones out. So then I want to get more, um, and then have different colonies of all of them. Like. And I want to get me Pacilia wengii endless. I want to get them outdoors in the summer, get them breeding. <clears throat> Just want to have fun, guys, and get some plants growing. I want to get dwarf sides growing, Val, um, Ludwigia repens. And I'm just thinking, if I set these tanks up now, um, th the weather's going to start heating up, isn't it, in March? So I'm not far away from March now in terms of. So, yeah, I'm not sure. Guys, take care. See you soon.